probably 18 years old, and, uh, two boys on the road as a spectator then. You know, I shot photos from the bleachers, but, you know, I wasn't a credential photographer. I was just a spectator, professional spectator. I was going to the races every weekend somewhere. I mean, you were doing the same thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a different age back then. In the old days, when I was actually started shooting from the wall, or from the guardrail, you could lay down and shoot under the guardrail before they went to double guardrails. And you could do a lot of really cool stuff that you can't do now. But that said, I understand why they went to the walls. And I feel safer standing behind the wall, especially down track, than I do standing behind the guardrail. I mean, this weekend I've been shooting at 200 feet past the finish line. I wouldn't do that with a single guardrail. You know, here I've got a wall that's, I don't know, four feet high or four feet six, solid concrete wall, and I feel safe behind it. When you're young and uh, you want to get close to the action, you don't well, care nothing about it. Yeah, that, that's true. I can remember going to Lions and sneaking out and standing at the guardrail right at the finish line and listening to the front engine top fuel cars coming at me. And all you'd hear was the whine of the blowers coming. And they'd get, you know, close and you'd duck. And, but uh, we were young and stupid. But it was a rush and it was fun and we were living the dream. You know, as far as I know, I don't know about any photographers that actually were killed. Um, no, I know of a couple photographers that have been hurt by debris off of crashing race cars. Les Lovett had his leg broken when Sushma Tsubara crashed at Ontario. Um, Andy Wilshire had his leg broken at Gainesville five, six years ago when the weight bar came off of Ashley Force's A Fuel car. It was probably more than five or six years ago, but anyhow. Yeah, we thought we were invincible. Yeah, and, and in all the years I've been doing this, the only time I've come close to being hurt was before I started shooting by the wall. I was a spectator at Irwindale in the early 70s and uh, 55 Chevy had a clutch explosion and a piece of the pressure plate came through the fender, hit me in the shoulder, two thirds of the way up in the bleacher. Hit me in the head, I might not be here. But I've never had anything quite like that down on the starting line. I had half the blower case of uh, Larry Dixon's car land right between me and John Asher at Irwindale one time. In fact, that was the famous final of the uh, Kreger Five Second Club race at Irwindale when he raced Garlitz in the final and uh, he grenaded the blower right on the starting line. Half the blower case landed right between me and Asher. <laughs> Fond memories. There's really no good answer to allowing photographers good access without them at some point blocking the view of the spectator. At least they don't allow the ladders. The big ladders, yeah, yeah. And, and part of it too is, you know, at some events, they just credential way too many people and it's just a solid wall of people. And, you know, like this race in the reunion or, or one of or two of them really, where, so when there's that many people, I try not to be part of the problem. I'll go to the top end and plus I don't like dealing with the huge crowds of photographers. But part of the appeal of Fremont was back in the day, the guardrails weren't right next to the track. They were farther back than guardrails at a normal track. So as a spectator, you could you could do a lot of cool stuff without worrying about the guardrails at all. Yeah. Much more so than say, Irwindale or Orange County that had the guardrails right next to each lane. There weren't a lot of tracks like that, but uh, that was goods and bads. Uh, as, as a racer, it gave you more room to, before you hit the wall, but it also gave you more of a chance to get in serious trouble <laughs> if you tried to use that extra room. I feel very fortunate to have been around the sport in that time and I feel like that really was the golden age of drag racing. What they've done to drag racing now with the uh, you know, 85% or whatever they're running in Nitro and the big show, the cars don't sound the same. You know, we come here for the reunion and we're shooting down in the top end and they're push starting cackle cars all weekend. When you hear uh, Tom Hanna or Bob Kreitz's car start from 800 feet away, it's like a symphony. I mean, the music, the sound of it, modern day cars don't sound like that.
not even close. The old, the sound of the old cars, just like beautiful music. And today's cars are loud. But they just don't have that crispness and the same sound. And I and I miss that. There was uh, it was it was just a special time. You know, I was shooting Irwindale, Orange County, a little bit of Lions, going to Fremont, Sacramento when I could, um, Bakersfield, Fresno. It was just a special time in drag racing. It was just a lot of cool stuff going on all the time. I miss it. I, 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 all, I mean, I miss it. I, I, I know why it's gone away, and I know it can never go back. And I feel, but I feel very fortunate that I was there for it. Because the kids, the kids today will never experience it. Even the kids that get into drag racing will never really know what we got to see.